It's uh, four o'clock in the morning, April Fool's Day, 1970. And uh, I'm sitting at the guard post uh, next to the front gate of a small heavy equipment engineer company. Uh, they clear the roads, hilltops, things like that, with big brown plows. And uh, my platoon had been flown down from Camp Eagle about a week before. And uh, we flown into Cameron Bay, and then we had three uh, two and a half ton trucks assigned to us from a transportation company. And we convoyed down to Fan Rang and then headed west to Delot and uh, picked up QL-20, came down to QL-20 to this uh, engineer base, which, I don't know, probably 10, 15 miles south of the lot. On QL-20, close to a, a river, Nim, now Nim River, or something like that, I don't know. But anyway, we've been there for about a week, and uh, we've been convoying every day from this camp to the new base we're working on. Uh, this engineer and heavy equipment company have already cleared the hill with the most from with most of the trees and the brush and the jungle. So we were just there cutting down more trees and clearing a, a wider uh, free fire zone around the, the hilltop. So and this had been for about a week. Nothing much had happened. It was pretty quiet. We would uh, get in our trucks every day drive on down, go through a couple of villages, everybody wave at us, I'm like, okay, this is not bad. But uh, tonight, uh, I started my guard shift, I think about two o'clock in the morning, and it was about 4 a.m. All of a sudden, I was just like, from uh, the north side of the camp, camp is probably a, a half a block, size of a half a block, and, the south side of the camp, and I was on the east side of the camp facing QL-20, the road that was uh, past this village in front of us. So we had, had a road next to me from the guard uh, position, and probably only a couple of two or three hundred yards was so a small village, and then you ran to the village and picked up QL-20 to head south. So uh, I was sitting there, and it was kind of a you know, berms are built up all around the camp, about, you know, five, six feet high. And I was in two large culverts, probably chest high, and it would get roof over me. And I was sitting there with uh, an M60 machine gun and a pack of cools. So about four o'clock in the morning, this fireball just shoots in front of me and lands down at the end of the camp. Corrosion! I'm like, what the? And here comes another one, and then uh, another one came, and uh, the ammo uh, bunker was to my left, and then there was a guard tower. And I could see where that rocket went right between the roof of the guard tower and the wall of the guard tower. Get close to the road in front of me. And then another one came in directly in front of me, I don't know. It was probably between 1,500 yards, and that's what I felt. The, Concussion from that one, like holy crap, this is this is serious. <laughs> so I, I got down in the, my position, and then uh, I started hearing mortar rounds impact inside the camp, like crump crump behind me. So I was like, what the? And nobody was returning fire. I was just sitting there, like, oh, when's somebody gonna open up? Because the rounds are coming in from my left. You know, it's right on the the line there. So. I, there's nothing in front of me except this village. Nobody was firing back, and you could see these rockets are coming from the wood line. I don't know, probably four or five hundred yards outside the camp, that side of the camp. Nobody was returning fire. I'm like, what the heck? And finally, somebody started running up behind me. Don't shoot, don't shoot. <laughs> like, we're supposed to have a password, but oh well. I turned around, and uh, this guy is coming from the operations center. He said, they might be trying to come in the wire, so watch the inside of the camp. So I'm like, okay. And he goes running back to the next bunker. So I kind of flipped a M60 around and started looking inside the camp, watching inside the camp. And I could see some mortar rounds 
impact inside the camp. And uh, in this camp, everybody slept in bunkers. We were all in, in bunker, live in bunkers. So, you know, as long as everybody's inside the bunkers, they're okay. Uh, I hoped. Anyway, so this went on, I don't know, it seemed like, you know, forever. It was probably, I don't know, 20 minutes. Several rockets coming in, orders coming in. And then uh, I was facing uh, east. And then to the southeast was a, a hill, you know, again, several hundred meters from the camp. And I started seeing green tracers coming in the camp. I thought, well, they're firing, small arms firing in the camp. And, you know, nobody's still firing back yet. It's like, what the heck? Finally, it quieted down a little bit. And uh, it's getting close to four o'clock and somebody showed up to relieve me and I went back into our uh, our bunker where uh, half our platoon was. We had like two squads in the bunker. They were large living bunkers. And I come in there, you know, me and a couple of guys come in that were on guard duty and like look, everybody was kind of awake and like, what? What's going on? I said, what are you talking about? And like some of them, I mean, uh, I mean, they're inside the bunker, so I see it's kind of muffled, and they're going over their heads. But anyway, everybody's kind of awake, and we we're looking through the windows of the bunker, and uh, we had lights around the camp and wires. So everybody's just like looking at the wire, and uh, then a few more uh, rockets came in, and then finally, right outside the, to the right of our bunker, we had our 50 caliber heavy machine gun. Finally somebody started firing that one. And I was on that corner of the the bunker and I was looking out the window all the boom, 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 man, a concussion, like right in, it's not like right in my face. It was, he was probably about, barrel was probably, I don't know, eight, ten feet away. But anyway, finally he started shooting back because there was this little small shack, I don't know, probably a few hundred yards out in this uh, little rice field and I just fired at that. But the rockets were actually coming from the tree line, you know, another 100 or 200 yards past that. So anyway, this went on for a while. They, they quieted down and started getting daylight. And uh, so we, we got up and started getting ready to mount up in the trucks and, you know, convoy out to the camp that we were working on. And one of the trucks said, flat tire. So we had to fix that. We waited for that. And then we headed out the gate. And we're going down the road and uh, <laughs> we were passing these villages and usually they're waving at us. And today there's hardly anybody outside. And the people who were just looked at us as we went by. And we all like kind of looked at each other like, <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Uh, so we went down the road and usually on the way to the camp we pass uh, the local militia patrol, mountain yards, they patrol the road uh, between this camp and the next camp, they patrol the road and there's a uh, kind of a guard check, they, you know, not a roadblock but a checkpoint that we go through and usually we pass these guys and truck on through the camp. Well today we we're a little behind so we were just coming around this curve, and all of a sudden they're like, da 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 da, da and we're like, oh god! I think I was in the rear of the three trucks. First truck swerves off the road, hits the brakes, and the other two trucks follow. We're sitting there, and we all just boom, jump off the truck, and there's a, a ditch along the road. We jump in this ditch, and uh, there's a graveyard in front of us. Uh, you know, we got in the ditch and I realized that, you know, we didn't have the M60 machine gun. So I ran back to the truck, got the M60, you know, ran up, dropped it down, and whoever is supposed to be carrying the thing. Anyway, I sat there in the ditch for a while. We could hear the shooting in a tree line, I don't know, maybe just 100 yards to our left. Cause the front truck stopped before they got to the tree line. And anyway, this patrol had been ambushed up there right at this curve and you could tell they were fighting into the tree line there and uh, so we said well let's move out and somebody said well I'm a sergeant so well, let's move out and we moved up to this graveyard right in front of us and these Vietnamese graveyards are like these mounds with 
you know, they had a big mound where they were buried and there's kind of a small wall around the mound. So we all run up there and take positions in these <laughs> grave sites, basically. So we're sitting there, you know, and all this shooting's going on over here. We're like, okay, we're just sitting there waiting. Somebody comes out, you know. I guess we're going to start shooting. Uh, I just remember sitting there, you know. I'm not a religious person, but I was sitting there, man, I don't want to kill anybody. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but, you know, they're going to kill us. So, uh, uh, sat there for a while, and there's still all this shooting going on, and I sat there, oh man, I can't die, I can't, I can't die, because man, it makes so many people sad back home. <laughs> my mom, my grandma. <sighs> anyway, we sat there for a while, <clears throat> and uh, shooting get, kind of moved on down the tree line, so we got back to the road, got back to the trucks, and we sat there, and uh, the sergeant, platoon sergeant, was on the radio and somebody. And we sat there and sat there and sat there. Finally, I got, I got out of the truck. They were just sitting ducks sitting all of us sitting in the truck. I got out of the truck. I said, well, let's not get in the truck until we get ready to go. So one by one, everybody started getting off. And then the sergeant says, okay, we're ready to go. And so we loaded back in the trucks. And uh, about that time, <laughs> We all jump out of the trucks again, and a Huey uh, helicopter gun show right over our heads, like fired into the tree line in front of us. So we're like, oh shit, we're back in the ditch again. Anyway, helicopter was circling around and, you know, supporting the, the mountain yard militia that was chasing these guys, the, the NBA in the woods. So I sat there for a while, and finally, they get back in the trucks and they started going down in the line of the trucks and said, uh, the two bridges behind us between us and the camp were blown, so we got to go back and <laughs> build the bridges so we can get back to camp. So we, thought, we were like, oh, gee whiz, man, it's a sudden turn of events here. We're in the war now. <laughs> so uh, we turned around, go back up the road, the first bridge, or, they're just over these little creeks, so what we're going to do is just temporarily cut some trees down and fill the creek bed up enough where we could drive the, the deuce and naps over. So uh, we got on the truck, started working on that, and me and about half a dozen of the other guys pulled one out to the flanks. There's probably like a couple hundred yards cleared on each side of the road, so <laughs> there's like three of us on each side, yeah, just walking up and down the tree line. And man, you look into that, I guess you call it the jungle, it, you can only see, I don't know, <laughs> five yards maybe in there, and that was it. So we we spent, uh, I don't know, the good part of the day redoing those bridges so they get back to the, the engineer base. And uh, so we got back there, and they gave us a briefing, and they said, well, there's like a battalion of NVA in the area. And uh, we could be overrun, you know, so let's, we gotta stay on our toes. And uh, it ended up hand grenades and laws, and we knew it's getting serious now. So, uh, what we did is uh, we had our 50 caliber machine gun. We, our platoon brought our the company's 50 caliber and two M60s with us. And uh, so, we welded a, a gun mount in the middle of the bed of one of the deuce and a half halves and mounted the 50 caliber machine gun in the bed of the deuce and a half. And then we uh, sandbagged the sides of all the trucks. And, uh, and the next morning, you know, well, we got uh, some rockets again that night, not as much as the previous night. And uh, the next morning, we mounted up, opened the gate, and off we went down the road to the camp. And uh, we did that little trip probably for about a week until we got uh, enough trees cleared and got some foxholes dug in that hill so we could stay there from then on. And uh, for about a week, uh, 
we got rocketed and mortared right at supper time and then early in the morning and uh, <laughs> what we would do is take turns run to the mess hall get our chow run back to the bunker and those mess hall guys and i got into them they were there with their helmets on flak jackets still serving us so and i remember one of the rounds landed outside the mess hall and the command, their company commander's jeep was parked there and just shredded that thing trapped the holes all over the thing so they knew what they were doing. If we'd have been standing there in lines to mess all like we usually are, I mean, we'd have been in big trouble. So that's what we did. <laughs> we took turns standing behind that 50 cal man, traveling down the road to that camp every day. Then when we get to the place where we're almost ambushed, everybody kind of hunkered down behind the sandbags and off we went. Occasionally we have to like tell the driver to slow down because I thought he was going to like kill us going around his turn. Two and a half, we like a man doing a power slide around the turns. But uh, we finally got to the position where we got some barbed wire strung up at the, the new camp and we had some foxholes dug and we started staying all night there. And that's another story. <laughs> I, when I came back uh, for years, I had nightmares about going down that road.